Street. So today we are have the honor of inviting one of the, the, the speaker today, who is the founder of Dachen Stainless Steel Industries. It's not been an easy thing to get him. Hello, 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 hello. Thank you. So. So first, I would like to uh, share with you some of the clips we have provided. Uh, you may not be so familiar with with who he is, but you may be familiar with some of the uh, the video clips that we've seen before on the ITV. So, for promoting vegetarianism, you can see how much effort he has put in to help that. Now, some of you may have heard what he has done to help promote vegetarianism, but at the same time, I'd like to show you some of the, the clips of him. so we'll let this run in the background, but from there you can see that uh, what people say that the more you know about uh, Robert Xie, you, you will be more impressed with who he is. Because he not only speaks and promotes, he's also doing it uh, leading by example uh, with providing vegetarian meals for all his staff. And everyone who we talk to, we talk who we, when we talk about them, they're they are filled with smiles, and they're really glad to have a boss just like him, who really care about their, his employees. So I'd like to thank the Tainan documentation team for, for preparing this clip for it. But because he's in, in Tainan, uh, some people may be familiar with how much involvement he has in the construction of the Jinsi Hall in Tainan. Now, previously, the group was going to come and share, but due to the pandemic, they'll come at a later time. So now you can see on the, uh, in, the, in the picture here is the Jinsi Hall. And you can show a little snippets or clips of when it was construct, constructed, when it was built, and the effort that everyone put in to make this their home. So the wirings are all from employees that that were called upon by by Robert Xie. And I really hope that my employee can have, can have a thought of willingly contribute and to, to volunteer. And with the help and the effort of everyone, uh, we can see this is called standing tall and deeply rooted in the community. 
，所以大家有没有觉得哇，我们好希望哈，就是我们各处都有一个像这样的佛心老板，然后就近的静思堂这个部分就得到更多的一个。So now coming back to our our live live stage here, uh, we can see we are seeing many of the friends as well as our future speaker today. 老板，你真的很赞，谢师兄，你真的很赞。首先邀请到的是我们的淑芬师姐，好，是淑芬师姐，您。So first we have a sister 淑芬 to share with us. 我们对，嘿，对，感恩您。I remember earlier this year. 慈济人，大家好。When the 今年的年初，跟谢师兄。Ecological Park in Gangsan. Uh, we see there are four restrooms and they're standing and filled with with aesthetics. And this actually came from as a donation of of Brother Roberts because years ago, uh, when his wife had trouble finding a restroom there, he decided that he's going to. To donate and build the restrooms and help everyone who have, are in the same situation, and from now, all the cleaning, maintenance, to the toilet paper has all been sponsored by his company. Even the janitor janitors are considered to be employees of the group. So a lot of them are are praising him that. They're really fortunate to have met someone who is as benevolent as he is, and having the opportunity of becoming an employee of the Dachan Stainless Steel Industries. And to to aid the the hospital staff, he also pledged a twelve thousand rice boxes. And to help promote vegetarian diet. So the feedback was that people really wanted to learn and 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 use that as an example. So we asked him for a couple of pictures. Well, he replied as saying that you know, regardless, just let me know how many boxes you need and you want to try it. I will send that to you so you can experience yourself. So as after receiving it, you know, we know that we we can get more than just pictures. So all our recycling volunteers, all the volunteers in our in uh in the park, um, they all had the opportunity of experiencing his uh, efforts and his love for his wife, who he he was inspired by to promote vegetarian diet. And with his, uh, with what he has contributed to the community and helping other the other people, um, we really wish that his business would be prosperous and continue to to aid and support. The community. And next we have Sister Sugan. So I am very grateful to have the opportunity of having Teacher May Yun invited me here to share. Uh, without you, I wouldn't have the opportunity to stand right here. So, so I mean, yesterday we had opportunity having lunch at the at the company. Now I'm really honored at this opportunity to be meeting here. 
and with everyone's encouragement and support, especially with Master Zhen Yin's uh, leadership or as a role model. Now, because of since you have the opportunity to, to know uh, Brother Robert, and from him, you can feel that he is full of love. He is a very diligent and take actions very quickly. Now, my, my husband have known him for years, but and because of their their opportunity to to, to do business abroad. And he had, and he had opportunity to become our our benefactors. And you can see there's many reports or articles written about his uh, his stories and how he used to sleep in the factory to make sure everything is running smoothly. Now, even though he, despite his uh, high net worth, he's never let that affect him. He has been taking really good care of his brothers and sisters and even his employees. So there are a lot of people who are great supporters of him. And he's also been giving through providing meals for elderly, as well as you know, besides the vegetarian rice boxes. And he has filled with positive energy, and it's been a great inspiration to our life. And it'll be great to hear about his sharing and how he is passionate about protecting life. So let's give a round of applause to welcome the founder of Da Chen. Steel Industries, a brother Robert Xie. So we have a lot of our families from, from Shanghai, from South Africa joining today. And I'm very grateful for the team that came from Tainan, as well as the, the people from Gangshan. So from here, you can may may feel that things are really different today. Um, you can see how much room we have today, uh, because because of the pandemic, we try we try to keep things to a minimum. So only me and and a handful of staff, but a lot of other supporters, they are also here because of his name. There are a lot of other people who want to be here, but unfortunately, we couldn't let them gather because of the, the pandemic measures. So for all our people that are listening in and connecting on the cloud, uh, please give us a thumbs up, show your love, as well as, you know, subscribe to our group so you can hear about the latest news. So next, let's start our our program today. Uh, 
Uh, first of all, I want to uh, find out more about this four-star restroom. It all originally from your wife, isn't it? So, initially, the thought was, the thought was simple. Uh, when I went hiking with my wife in the, you know, in the ecological park, and she had trouble finding a restroom. So at that time, I thought, well, if you're having trouble finding a restroom, then why don't we just build one? Now, because we have built many schools in the past, I've donated many schools to be built in the past, and I thought that it would be a simple, simple gesture to build restrooms. And it's, it's, it was indeed a pretty easy thing to do. The hard part was, the, the problem was maintenance, because you know, after you build it, we need somebody to clean it and maintain it. And the bigger problem, but, and the bigger problem is if there's, if there's nobody cleaning it you know, in a couple of days, and immediately it became unusable. So I thought, since there, since there is a, a, te a temple next to the park, who, which has become famous for you know, 350 years because of their famous vegetarian meals. So I was thinking what kind of legacy that I can leave to the community and how do I make a, a company that can last for generations. So I thought about providing the staff or, or managing and cleaning the restrooms. So I thought that, you know, with people caring for it, then it shouldn't be a problem that will last for, that, uh, for decades. That is no problem at all. It all originally from the thought that you want to give your wife a nice place when she's hiking. And from this idea, you are helping more than just your wife. And and the people, the custodian who works at this restroom, they are just full of happiness. Well, so coming back to the restroom stories, and it's been. Ever since I built the, the restrooms, I've been I've been you know, coming and hiking and visiting them to make sure that they are well kept. And it's been what seven to eight years since then, and I've noticed that people that you know, go exercise there or hiking there, uh, there are tens of thousands of visitors. But even though it's been past six, seven or eight years. Even then, even now, there's still there's still there's still a well maintained and 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 leaving me a sense that I want to go back. So it is so. I'm really glad that the, the janitors or the people managing the restrooms are, are doing so willingly and they're really happy to do the job. And I thought to help them to, to stay happy, I need to help solve their problems. 
好像可能找不出任何缺点了。好，那么啊，我们那个中间，你看到那个中间那两个厕所啊，哈。One of the plans was that to make these restrooms sustainable. So whenever it rains,、um, we can see people may track their the mud or sand into the restroom. So to help reduce the debris being brought into the restroom, I have paved. The、uh, surrounding areas, so that there's elevated platforms that people can walk ar walk around, so that they don't need to, they they won't be tracking mud into the restroom and causing problem for the maintenance crew. And patiently, we may see that the the, the stones may be out of, well, maybe out of place, so there'll be mud. So every time I see that, I ask them to solve the problem. And I've always been thinking about ways to improve,、uh, whether it is to create like a concrete pathways. Uh, or or re re replace the stone so that they won't be bringing in sand. Actually, when we find out from the employees, we realize it's so thoughtful. Places from big nothing to a four-star restaurant. So one of the problems that we encountered was that there's no electricity or water lines、uh, where the restrooms were built, but the water was previously collected on the from the mountains, and because there are so many visitors,、uh, there are times that when there is not enough pressure, so that. It's making flushing and cleaning very difficult. So I have contacted the water company. And then together we connected the water lines from under, from from the flatlands and lead it up to the mountain. And if you walk by there, you'll see a kind of a mansion.、Um, it was one of my one of my one of my friends' mansion, and he saw that I was trying to connect the water lines. He said that, well, since you've done so much, why don't you just connect it off of my water line? Well, I thought that my friend, even though my friend has been a very, it's been very、uh, generous, I still thought that this shouldn't this. And I thought that well, even now that you know you you are willing to give, but what about your son or your your grandson? What about the fellow generation family?、Uh, are they willing to be as generous as you are? So I decided to set a completely different water meter, so without making him to to donate. Are you very impressed by his thought? He has a vision that he's not just thinking currently; he's thinking more about the next generation. 大家有空真的可以去超超风市去走一走。当我们去走一走的时候，才知道。在过程里面，为什么那么多人想去？因为也有人跟我们分享说，因为那个。You have time. You should go visit this place and visit this place. People come here because this is such a clean restroom. 
and it's a collateral effect. It, other place will also want to be like this. Uh, about the happy enterprise. Everybody who works here feel a lot of happiness. Even the person that's cleaning the restroom or the custodian, they are also appreciative working here. Because of this, we have uh, several interviews about this company. So since I founded the company, it's been, been about 40 years. And from from now to about nearly 6,000 employees across the world, I have never set a, a goal or for for earnings or productions for all my for my staff. I never I never set them a goal for them. I only have one thought. That is, you are have to do this willingly. If you're not doing so willingly, then it's best not that you know, might as well not do it, even if you're getting paid. So for the past 40 years, every day, my thought is how to be willingly do what I do. Even you know, all the things I do, I'm willing to do so. And all my staff, well, not just my employees, all those people that who I've known, like, like even my clients, uh, my suppliers, customers, you know, bankers, everyone who I've interacted with, if I can't feel that they are willingness, then I much rather not work with them. People who come here today, are you willing to come here today? Or somebody uh, push you to come here? Wow, I can tell you guys are so wanted to be here on your own will. I know there are many companies from China. They're also here to learn about your company secret. Have a female employee works at the United States when they return to Taiwan. Turn to work and rent houses for good reason. So about six to seven years ago, since I've been developing the U.S. market, um, I needed staff who can be there. Um, I know that you know people that workers or employees from Taiwan they have they are more thoughtful, more comprehensive in their in their job. So I have about four to five staff members uh, who graduated from you know, prestigious universities. And those who are like managers in, in accounting firms, and I, I hire them uh, so that to go to the U.S. to help manage my business there. And so they're, they've been there for about six to seven years. Some of them even got a permanent, re permanent residency status. But they having, they're having trouble finding a stable position or or a, 
wanted to start a family there. So they came back to Taiwan because they didn't want to stay in the U.S. So I thought, well, what's happening now, now since you've been working so hard for, for promoting the business, uh, what can we do to help you to settle back in Taiwan? Now, that was... Now, that was before the, the high-speed rail was, was built, so, and for those who came back, um, they may be more familiar with international business, then perhaps it's best that no, you can stay in Taipei and manage the, the business from there. So, even though I didn't really need to set a, a branch office in Taipei, I still wanted to. I still wanted to find a place in Taipei that that uh, that's gonna be safe for for all of them. So they found one in a very very uh, prominent location, one of the very well-established neighborhoods in Taipei. And that has became their kind of the dormitory, their homes. Because my thought was only to, to find a, a safe place, even in the middle of the night, so that when they work alone or come home later at night, they're not, they don't need to be concerned about their safety. Or if they needed to leave uh, to go to the office, they, they, they would be safe. So I mean, the, so I bought the house then, and then now, and the property has more than doubled. But that wasn't. But in, investing in a property wasn't my thought. It was just for the safety of my, my employees. And even though the ho housing price skyrocketed, it hasn't affected me much. Wow, from by listening to him, this Oh, we just want to provide a safe place for his female employee. But who knew at the end, he's the one that profit the most. So uh, the buildings that, that I, I, I have, it's not, not just an office building, it's actually a residential building. But, no, but my location is probably maybe one of the best neighborhoods in Taipei. It has a two motive. One is for employees to work and one is for them to stay. It doesn't really need that house. Just provided for his employee. And when you think more about others, but at the end, you get more from as a result. Another question, do you always donate when you have money? I want to talk about the first environmental truck that you donated to Tsuchi. Well, in 1989, when the Tsuchi volunteer mission, I mean, Tsuchi's environmental protection mission was, was enforced, um, I've been thinking at that time, I was in my memory. 
Uh, my first experience in CG was in 1997, and because my when my business uh, went public in 1995, I had the I have you know, the ability and opportunity that I to to visit Hualien, and I know that I made the vow that if I have the if I have the ability to, then I would. Donate and help. So after you know, I I have the the means to. Um, I have provided more than tens of million NT in donation. And hasn't been hasn't been with that, like with a with a not with a plan. So it started out with one of the like the vice manager who's also a CG volunteer. Uh, in my in my company, uh, when I see when I saw him, you know, putting his recyclables in, on his uh, a motorcycle, and there were many bags piling up on his motorcycle as he ride to the recycling station, and I thought that was a very dangerous thing to do. So I thought that you know, I wanted to to buy a car for him so he can do the recycling. And, and help with environmental protection. And I actually forgotten about it uh, because back then it, uh, there were no receipts. Uh, it was just a. It was just a. It was just an award certificate. So when I did that, my my accountant actually scolded me because say that all the. The money that I gave could have collected interest in the bank, but I decided, you know, if I had, to, if I wanted to do it, then I should just go ahead and not care about the interest. Give them a round of applause. Uh, most people think that he donated when he's already wealthy, but he actually started when he started this company. He wasn't wealthy back then. So my Dharma name that Master gave me was Ji Nuo, uh, Nuo as in as in vow or promises, and so I that's been my model to keep my keeping promises. The picture at the at his office. There's a picture of Buddha, and then in his office, his wife is sitting right next to him. During the Kaohsiung gas explosion, he also donated stuff to the accident. So in order to provide a vegetarian meal for his staff, he has spent um, more than you know, 
ten million, ten to twenty million NT, uh, each each month, I mean each year. Uh, but his thought of providing this is so that all his uh, employees, clients, even suppliers, they can all benefit. Uh, for those who came to visit, and they will be able to get a good meal at the office. Um, not and not just eating while they're there. They could still pack up and take it to go when they when they go home. So from this part, I would like to have you share more about like how your thought process and what you're promoting vegetarianism. So my vegetarian story started uh, you know about a decade ago when we had a a prayer in the in the office, and I thought that. You know, every day there are thousands of people uh, who are who are practicing the uh, Dharma water repentance, um, and and while I was practicing the repentance, uh, it has been kind of a you know easy for me to take a vegetarian diet for the 180 days or 108 days that uh, we were rehearsing. And I thought that you know, while it is easy to, to do so at the city office, I wanted to provide a, a kind of a safe place, a, a clean place uh, to have so that people can enjoy it. So I decided to call my office or my, my factory uh, as a as a uh, a pure land, so the, so we hire caterers who to provide vegetarian rice boxes. But it hasn't been very comfortable eating because you know it is a steel factory, so it is really hot. So I decided that after the water repentance, I want to build a a cafeteria where people can enjoy comfortably their meals. So, so when I when I built it, I if I if I had thought how many people or how many meals I'll be serving, I probably wouldn't do it. it but it wasn't until my wife had reminded me that I have, you know, there's 1,500 employees who I need to feed on a daily basis. Um, at that time, I already decided to want to do it. I already made that promise. So I didn't think much of the cost or anything. Um, because previously, when we when we calculate the the cost per person, um, well, a lot of people were reminding me that we could reduce the cost by providing lesser quality meals. But you now, coming back to the willingness story. I, if I wanted my employees to enjoy it, I have to provide them with something that I want to eat myself, and I would enjoy it myself. So that has been the thought process behind everything. That if I, if, unless I'm able to do it willingly, I wouldn't do it. And if I, if I, and if I'm willing to do it, then it was without any hesitation, with no, nothing holding back. From the beginning, all his model is he wants people willingness to do it from the bottom of their heart. He doesn't want to force anyone. Because of this, I realized his company, Da Chen Steel Enterprise, is a pure land. Spent over a million dollars to build this restaurant just for his employees. He cared about the 
health of those vegetarian meals. And he also cared about his employee. This is not just the first time that we're going to talk to the CEO of Dachan Enterprise. We、we'll、hope he'll come back later in the future. So this is、uh, coming back to the start of benefiting others.、Uh, there was a research study before that mentioned that there is an a altruism altruistic patch in our brain, and that when we're benefiting others, this area becomes activated. So as we can see from、uh, Brother Robert, that this altruistic part must be well developed、uh, because it's so focused on benefiting others, and each thought about、uh, creating business. I mean, to creating goodness. So in the future, we'll definitely have the opportunity to invite him back, so he can share with us some more.、Um, and we're so grateful to have him joining us today. So once more. Well, let's give a round of applause. And like to have、uh, Brother Robert go back to return to his seat. Now you can see on the screen. This is compassionate altruism. And every single thought is kind. And the thought of kind can can be beneficial to everyone. And just like Master taught us, we need to keep our tranquility and be firm and be stable. Not. Shaken by any disturbance in the environment, just like Brother Xie, he's always doing his best to be beneficial.